Welcome to the Tourism Hub podcast, a podcast devoted to you and your excellence, providing inspiration and education for the entrepreneurs, experience makers and excellent seekers of our industry to take your tourism business and career to a whole new level. Relax. Hello and welcome to the, this episode of the Tourism Hub podcast. Now, today we are coming to you not from a tourism destination, but a hub of small businesses in Victoria here at Brentford Shopping Centre or District and a leading, <laughs> a leading ambassador of small business in this patch, Eyewear Architects. Welcome, Mel. Welcome, Penny. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for agreeing to do this with me. Now, I met Mel and Penny. They were a burst of energy that came on to the Business Victoria <laughs> small business bus a well, few very months excited. ago. Yes. Very excited. And they made me excited. And it's like, how can we just bring more of your story to our networks? And, you know, it's not traditional, but there's a lot of synergy here when we're talking about tourism or we're talking about small business, vision, both vision in business, but the importance of vision biologically. Uh, (laughs) uh, And going through my own journey um, and what led me from meeting them and I've been putting off getting my eyes checked and... And here we are, and I found my people. It's like I want you to take care of my eyes and what's happening to my eyesight. <laughs> I always to all of us. I Jessie. think it's just the morning and then it's like, oh, it's no, carried on through it's the, the day. The phone just yesterday, it's I was at a conference and I looked at the back of the tag for the program and I'm going Stretching. back in the lanyard yes. and I'm almost pulling myself <laughs> to find so it. But away. look, we've got a lot to talk about because this is, uh, so welcome everybody, welcome to you. Uh, we're going to start with just the essence of your work and where you've spent your your lifetime, you know, majority of your lifetime, particularly with you, Mel. I'll start with you, your journey in I guess to start with, what was your journey or your aha moment that this is the career I'm going to pursue to help and support people with their vision impairments <laughs> and vision <laughs> challenges? Yes. And, um, yeah, and then leading us to eyewear architects. Oh, well, uh, I started quite young, so I was only 18 when I came into the optical industry and I'm 52 now. It's been a really enjoyable journey and I'm incredibly passionate about independent optometry, hence small business, uh, because independent optometry is almost like a whole different ball game to corporate optometry. Um, I'm a qualified spectacle maker and that is quite rare and so is Penny. Um, our industry out the front of house, so what we would call our dispensary as opposed to our optometry room, Our dispensary is usually run by a dispenser or someone with some knowledge on lenses, but Penny and I are old school spectacle makers, which means we can do optical fitting and surfacing. We went through RMIT. I did five years at RMIT. At the moment, that qualification doesn't exist. I think possibly um, through deregulation. So you don't have to be qualified to work out at the the front dispensary in an optometry practice anymore, which I think is a little bit heartbreaking. There has been a little bit of a dumbing down of what we do, um, and that is where we're different to anywhere else you'll go. You come in and you're seeing people that are really knowledgeable and have a real depth of knowledge. So we're able to tick the boxes of your needs and and everyone has unique needs. And I know you're saying you're pushing the lanyard away and that happens to us all. And and Penny and I are in that age bracket as well. But with the digital world we're living in now, you know, you've got triple screens, double screens, you're doing podcasts, Mm -hmm. which are amazing. So your visual needs are quite different than just a pair of readers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And that's where Penny and I shine because we have that old school knowledge and and an old craft where we really understand the intricacies of your needs and the lenses that match them. Uh, I think that's probably where I come into it. Um, I I really love all the the nerdy optics and physics and mathematics (laughs) of what we do. I'm probably a little bit that way inclined and and Penny is absolutely the vision. I mean, look at her green glasses. (laughs) 
but the, the way you compliment each other in a partnership and your skills is just delightful. From the minute I met you, from the minute you came onto my bus. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really it's do. incredible. I, I see that and everybody comments on it and we're pretty much the yin-yang of each other. And I think if you are in small business, you know, to find somebody that shares your passion because we are both passionate about independent optometry and, and helping the wider community, but also that complements your skill set. So, you know, we're, we're so different in the way that we approach things, but it just knits so well together and I think that's why we work. Yeah. And did you meet at uni together? Was your journey the same? No, Had mine, I was, into... I was late 90s yeah. when I did mine. Yeah. And then um, we worked together, gee, I must have been mid-2000s, yes. maybe early 2000s mm. at an independent optometry practice. Mel started having children. We've both got three children each. So over the, what, 25 years or so, we've kind of been, all oh, 20 years that we've known each other. We've worked together on and off, but we've always known that we were meant to do something together. Yeah, we've wow. always known that. We've always said that the whole time. And then, of course, COVID hit and we're in different situations. Um, Mel was working in practice. I was repping for a business for frames. Um, and I guess I came to a point where I was missing my kids travelling a lot. And I wanted to stay in independent optometry, but I was frustrated to think that I'd have to go work for someone else because I wanted to work for me and I wanted to do something for myself. And Mel was kind of, I presume, came to the same point. And then I don't know how we did it. We just pulled everything together and found what was right for us. And I don't think I would ever go back, never no. We're very happy. We, yeah. we just laugh all the time, sometimes a little we bit do. too much. <laughs> <laughs> and we just enjoy what we do. We love meeting people. We love to know their story and that's really important when we are dispensing their story because we need to know what they do for work, all that kind of stuff. So we get to know our patients really we well, do. really well. So we form very strong connections with our patients and, and what Penny's saying about well, asking about their story and, and their life um, that's called lifestyle dispensing. And when you're lifestyle dispensing and we're asking you about your hobbies and things, that means that we can meet your visual needs so much better. Because if we don't have those discussions with you, you could end up with the wrong pair of glasses that doesn't work well. Like somebody that does a lot of driving that we can give them a lens with a big distance area. And I think we've made a couple of pairs of glasses recently for a gentleman who just bought a Tesla. They've got yes. a big screen in the middle, haven't they? The Teslas have got mm, this big screen. Yeah, the screen. new cars are like always changing. Huge television. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's a really unique distance to, to correct. So we had to we had to find the right lens that's going to give him that broad distance area, but also make that screen nice and clear as well. So it's those discussions that help us get your glasses right, but it also helps us build a relationship with our patients. And one thing with a small business like us is that when you come back in a couple of years or for your for your next mm. checkup, you see Mel and Penny again. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I definitely, I, I love that. I didn't even think that was a term and everybody can relate from a lifestyle dispense. Yes, uh, very uh, important. And your customer journey in the same way, whether it's, you know, you're giving a patient experience that they wouldn't otherwise have elsewhere. And now for myself, and that's what I had shared with you when we first met, I knew I had an issue, but it's just like any business, whatever industry we're in, we talk about the visitor experience, customer experience. What I had in my previous, I went in, but I didn't follow through. Life got busy. A yes. year passed very quickly before I got a letter in the mail to say you're due for your next checkup, but I actually didn't follow through with getting the lens. Sure. But your journey of coming here and the care factor to even ask like and customise what you did for me that I do train a lot in front of screens, I'm always delivering whether it's training or meets, meetings in front of and taking that into consideration, automatically there's a difference there of care factor. Absolutely. Of care factor that will keep everyone returning. Yeah. Now, we mentioned back on that starting point of starting a business. You have an idea and you've made that call, I'm at this phase of my life that 
I don't want to work for anyone else. Yeah, that's what I was like, certainly. And our children were a little bit older. And lifestyle, yeah. 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 And look, look, a lot of people are at that journey. You don't know when you're going to get hit with that. Like, I need a change. No. So with that... With that in mind, if we, your moment, going back to that moment that we're, we're, we're going to both hold our hands and jump. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. burn it the was boat. huge. Huge. It was huge because we've got thing. families. Yes. Yeah, it was families, a huge change. Yeah. Going back to there, what was the biggest thing that was holding you back that you didn't do it sooner? Um, my kids, you know, my youngest has just started high school. So they were still a little bit young and I think that's what was, and well, they were still a little bit young but also I didn't feel ready and I think that I needed to know more about the industry. I'd only worked, I worked in a corporate business when I started and then I've done independent optometry. So for me, I I guess being a a sales rep and going into all the different businesses, independent practices and learning from them Mm. really came back and I thought I can do this. Yeah. You know, I've I've got the knowledge. I know who I'd love to do it with. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it just came to a point. So your where research you jump. validating the idea you've had years of that because yeah. from the experience. I think a lot of businesses that go into that demographic of not making it past their first year miss that bit. Yeah. So you had inherently already done that when you're at that point. You're like, yeah. no, I can go in this with confidence because I've seen, oh, I've yeah. Lots of things from all the optometrists and all the business owners that I've met in different states, South Australia, Victoria yeah. and also Tasmania, you know, you get to know them all. You see yes. them every couple of months and talking to them and they tell you things and, yes. you know, and just the in- independent industry altogether. Like it's a very small industry. There's yeah. a so. huge depth of knowledge there that, that Penny's trying to sort of allude to. You know, yeah. She's worked in in repping. We've repped for the optical industry across across different fields. So that means that we have met every practice in Victoria and every practice in Tasmania. So we've seen all the small business practices and optometry practices within those two states. So that gives you a really broad understanding of our industry as a whole. And we've both done that a couple of times and we have come out of corporate into independent. We've worked in independent optometry for somebody else, but we've also, with having that rep background and meeting and getting to know and forming relationships with all of those other business owners gave us a really good understanding of the business as a whole. So I think that set us up for success. I think if you're going to start a small business, it really should be in an area where you know it well. This is my jam. I'm really confident at what I do and nobody knows more about this than I do. And I think that that set us up well. We knew we could do this. We knew this was our thing. But we've had to approach it quite differently because I think to start a, a new business now, in the times that we're in, it's not enough to just know your business. You have to know your industry. You have to set yourself apart. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think Penny said to me uh, (laughs) somewhere around the beginning, I remember, I think uh, when we were, yes, we know lenses, yes, we know frames really well, but you know, what's this Google business? And, oh, so yeah. much to learn. Oh, look at all these new social media platforms. You know, we're not young. They're, they're foreign to us. So huge, steep learning curve. But but Penny has this amazing attitude of fake it till you make it. No. And you know what? When you're faking it till you make it at the start, you're learning and suddenly, you know, you you become quite adept at those things as well. So we, we jumped into those <laughs> not knowing a huge amount, faking it till we make it, yeah. and then all of a sudden we realised that we were making it. But we we did it things a little bit differently. We tried to be creative in our approach and we, we certainly had a little bit of fun with, with socials. And optometry is quite a conservative. We're healthcare providers yeah. and, and that is what we will always be. But certainly if you popped on our... Facebook or our Instagram or our TikTok, you know, we, we have a bit of light-hearted fun and um, there's a little bit of comedy there and I think <laughs> that has stood us in good stead because we that has set us apart as 
wow, you know, look at those ladies. And I've noticed that a lot of other small independent optometry businesses are following us on on social media because we have got what I would call a fresh approach. Yes. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're tackling it a little bit differently. We're putting ourselves out there. And um, I think that was key as well, being Penny and Mel. Yeah. And being real. Yes. And, and that's you know, difficult to do. It's difficult to get in front of a camera yeah. all the time and speak and just seeing yourself on camera. That really makes you quite vulnerable. Yeah. And that's hard to get around it, but you just got to do it. You yeah. just got to jump in you and do, do it. You do it beautifully. Yeah. Oh, look, but I can relate. I remember at the start when there's no one there to press the play button, I'll go, come on, Despina, you can do yeah, it. Yeah. I would Pump always go, up. if not. You, then who? Yeah. If not now, then when? And I say that to businesses all the time because you find yourself suddenly the buck literally stops with you. So if yes. we want to supply our community, we have to also create demand and put ourselves out there. And I love I what I love about the fun and authenticity that comes across. What you see, number one, is what you get. You're not getting a different Mel and Penny when you meet you in person oh, totally. to what's online. But I also love how you're really using these channels and networks. They're organic, they're free, you're building a community, but it's also a great way that you're using it to educate the importance. Like yes. you, I will always, I think of you and that TikTok you did about <laughs> the funk that can grow <laughs> under your eyelids. Like if you don't take your makeup off yes. and it's the same with, you know, now with daughters and having that, uh, getting really into it, um, just having that good habits of practice of taking your stuff off. Yes, take your makeup off. Take it's your very, makeup very, off. Very, very important. Oh, very important. But it, that's what it's about. It's about edutainment or edu-marketing. Oh, I like as it. Much edutainment. As edutainment. <laughs> Boom. Um, it is. It's, it's edutainment. You're educating, but you're also creating really engaging, entertaining content, which well, is excellent. When we are creating the content, we do tend to not overthink it. I think that's really important. Yes. If you stage it too much, you don't come across naturally. So we just kind of jump in. Like usually yeah. it's the first maybe second take and that's it. We yeah. just go for it. So I think that's really important. And that was a great example. We're on the bus. I'm having another session with another business and <laughs> I just hear like hysterics oh. behind the bus. <laughs> They've just seized the moment and oh, did no. a venga did bus is coming. Us? Like it was just, <laughs> it was, but this, I think that's also like we talked extensively about the importance of a strategy but seizing moments where you just feel it getting it in the can and just go go for it is um is just as important now coming back to industry now yes. we are all a little bit like in the tourism industry we just think we're like we support small business in a different way just like you saw the program from small from business victoria to put out mentoring and training as an industry, we do that and we have a lot of businesses that not necessarily, they could be optometrists all their lives or accountants, but then come into business to open a bread and breakfast or a winery or something, a passion project because they love to travel. Sounds it's great. something that they've always wanted to do. How, how is, does that work? Because I think it's really interesting when I speak to a lot of businesses in tourism or visitor economy, tourism, hospitality events, there's just there's so much available to them to support and champion. Is that the same landscape nationally through your associations? Wow. Mm. No. Probably not. No. I mean, there there's, is... There's a couple of It's groups. quite divided. Yeah. So you've got your optometrist association. There is a dispensing association which does try and help train dispensers and give them some kind of knowledge when they're working in this kind of space. There's but also <laughs> some groupings as well. So like you have your IGA supermarkets, yes. there are a lot of optometrists that join buying groups. There's ProVision is a, a really big one. Yes. So that's for optometrist owned practices and they can link together, join and become a ProVision mm. member. Yes. And then under that ProVision banner, which works similar to IGA independent supermarkets, um, but obviously healthcare, yes. um, they provide 
training support with marketing. They might have marketing experts. They have buying power, so you might get mm. a little bit of a discount when you're buying a frame. Yes. Because there's an independent business. Is that the franchise kind of model sort no, of? No, no, no really different. Franchise. More oh. just becoming a member oh, and then okay. the your membership, within that membership it offers you support in guidance. Guidance. Okay. and guidance yeah. and buying power. Okay. Yeah, as in a, a discount. So yeah. I'd say that's probably um, we're not a, a member. We're of a that, member of I benefit, I which benefit, is a smaller yeah. one. It's smaller and um, there's not as many rules. Like yeah, if, yeah. If you want their help, they'll help yes. you. Look, I highlight that because I think any other industry specific businesses, when you're part of an industry, looking at your associations or the lay of the land of the industry that you're in and seek out what is the right membership model that's for me. Like I know in, 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 in our industry in particular, it's abundant, I feel. Like, yes, we have our challenges, um, but I think for small businesses it's important to know that that's not necessarily the case everywhere. If I speak to, you know, if we just go to a, the bakery across the road, how are they supported? Are they part of an association for bakers? Unless they're a baker's delight, perhaps, how to market and get them to the Bradford Shopping Centre. Oh, yeah, fantastic. So, right? So it's yeah. just like going beyond what, what industry are you in. Now, what I also sensed and the way that your even your local MP spoke so highly of you oh. that we met... Love John <laughs> and John loves you. But it's just another layer I want to bring anybody that's listening. That's very valuable. Valuable, I, I yes. Cannot, I cannot stress how valuable integrating into your community is. Yes. You have to put yourself Number out one. there. It's not enough just to open a door yes. and wait for people to come. You have to integrate yourself into your local and wider community and that's that's something that we've worked really hard on. So we we actually joined a Women of White Horse social and business group. That's been great. And that has been fantastic. Really so yep. um, that's run by a lady called Jennifer and we meet up for lunches or they might have a little event where you might go and learn about someone else's business. Penny here is the president of the Brentford Square Association. Oh, go, Penny. Yes, yes. <laughs> and yeah. President Penny. So good, yeah. <laughs> That's and it. she's brilliant. <laughs> and she takes her fresh yeah. approach to everything yes. here into that as well and she genuinely yes. cares. So um, that's all volunteer-based, you yeah. know, when yeah. you are dealing with a, an association like a little shopping strip and little shopping strips, they, they do have their battles compared to the bigger shopping centres but you, you don't think behind the scenes that there's a little association with volunteers trying hard to um, connect with their community. So we run Easter events. Um, we had a big Christmas market last year, which was great. That was yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Oh, it was so lovely and really seeing local the children out. so happy and just, yes. yeah, it was and a really great John's community local, event. Our local MP, John, is fantastic, I have to say. Uh, he came came in fairly, what, last year? Last year. And absolutely. Stepped in and engaged with engaged all the small with businesses. Everybody. Yeah, Every the, store, the every shop. Stops and talks to people. Uh, I I don't think he ever stops. But we thought, wow, what a what a dynamic yeah. mover. Really generous with his time. Wanted to know about your business. So of course that that was great to us because we wanted to connect with our local yeah. MP and we wanted to learn and be able to ask questions. Hey, hey, what do you think about this? And how how could we do this? Because you've got to learn from other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and White Horse Business Groups has been fantastic Absolutely, as well. Yeah. So we joined that very early on. We so did. that's our local council and they have a group to help small businesses. And All sorts of small businesses. You've just oh. got to find it. You've got to find it. And I think it's, I hope anybody that's watching or listening can take away from that, that wherever, because, you know, a lot of regions around the country, around the world, that are smaller, eclectic communities, uh, there's always a shire or a council, an economic development, a local MP that you could go and make the effort to go and introduce yourself outside yes. of what's happening with your regional tourism organisation or your state tourism organisation that also yes. in the same way that, that you're experiencing. So there's a lot of synergy there, but I thought that was an important one because I talk a lot about destination ambassadorship, but you're essentially doing the same thing. 
with this patch of where you are as a community ambassador and other people see that and say, well, they're achieving, you know, success leaves clues because they're also contributing and, and putting in and giving back. So good. Now, the journey, like having, um, having this vision for your business, now we're into year... What year are you? Three. Year three. Incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it's, and working together, what have you found even in building a team, like looking for the right humans that are going to fit into oh. your oh, culture? That's everything. Number that's one. everything as well. <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. Like if we can talk about uh-huh. that because it's whether, you know, in early parts, how did you find, because that would have been a new experience now as you're, you're the boss. It was. So yeah. we had to hire an optometrist, obviously, yeah. um, for our business. And being a new business, being a small, small industry, it's not easy finding someone that wants to walk into a new business because obviously they're not going to ha- be as busy as... There's a risk there. Yeah, yeah. there's a You're risk unknown. for them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that was... We've learnt a lot, I think, going through that yeah. journey. And we did have a... First optometrist left on maternity leave and then we, um, it happened at the right time because we met this amazing new optometrist who just fitted in so well and we just adore her. Yeah. You have to know who so, you are yeah. yeah, and what you want to be yeah. yeah, and then attract the right people yeah. um, that have the same vision as you do, that yeah. want to practice in yeah. the same manner and we're all about high-level care. Mm, so yeah. anyone that we brought in, that had to be at the forefront of what they wanted as well, that they cared, that that high-level care was important to them, that we take the time with our patients to get it right and to form those relationships and to do it well. Uh, we do have a fantastic team now and we're, we're very, very blessed, I think. We all really enjoy working together and we're all very like-minded and love what we do and it's a real pleasure to come to work. But I would say that you need to invest in your people and value them. Mm. Yes, value mm. them. You really need mm. to value them and look after good staff because mm. they're hard to find yeah. the mm. right people. And if you get the right people, look after them well so that they stay for the long term. Yeah. Um, because you really do become a bit of a work family. Um, yes. That's what I feel like we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a big difference to everyone's experience. Yours as owners, and also, um, you know, it translates to the the end result of like how a customer is walking out of eyewear architects. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to challenges and learnings, well, there's been a lot of <laughs> lot of a lot, lot of, of learning. <laughs> <laughs> a dear um, colleague, Paul Matthews, if he's listening, he said, "You're either fail or." You're if you're failing or you're learning, and that's called a flurn. I love oh, it. We've got we've a, had few a few words. words. <laughs> no, loving it. Yeah. We have write them today's down. Flurn. I, I think we might have had a few. Yeah, I loved it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flurn. We've had a few so flurns. <laughs> I don't flurns. think we'll ever stop flurning. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we're flurning all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Hashtag flurn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so if you could think, is there anything that comes to mind uh, in the journey so far of what, you know, what's been the great, you know, a great... For me, yeah. it's marketing. Marketing, um, yeah. That's been a big... Mar- Mal here is probably a big part of... She's We call her the ideas woman. Yeah. And I'm yeah. the doer, so yeah. I pull everything together. Yes. And usually what you see in our marketing and our posters and... That's usually something that I've put together. Yeah. I do a lot of that and yeah. that has been a huge learning curve and if you look way back from the start, you can see it progressing yeah. and that's just learning what um, software is working best and yeah. that's been huge for me. That's, that's, that's new huge. to us. That's completely that's, new. And that's also part of that yin and yang because I see you enjoy it. 
Like you're, yeah. you're drawing on your natural strengths. Yes. We so know each other's strengths. You know. Because yeah. you'll yeah. say she can, you know, Mel, like she's she's the one for that. She can just roll with it. You yes. just need to give her a quick brief and boom, you've got it. Yeah. But then I get the sense you've been enjoying discovering the software or the tools or how you could practically do things. Any of those that you could share with us, gold nugget tools that you can't live without now? Canva. Canva. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I didn't start with Canva. I started with something else. I can't even remember Cap what it is. No, no, no. We do. I do use CapCut Cap a little Cap bit Cut. for yeah. TikToks. Yeah. Um, but Canva's been fantastic. Yeah. And I believe that's an Australian It's an woman. Australian incredible wow. story. Yeah, young that's lady. dominated yeah, that's the huge. world. huge. And like billions. And it just, yeah. everything is so... Yeah easy and user-friendly yeah. and, I mean, you can use their templates or you can, you know, change their templates or you can start from scratch. Yeah. It's just, it's my world, yeah. Canva. Mm. So marketing's been the greatest learning or journey for, for you that you've yeah. built this whole new skill set through this journey. I think that's so. The of small business of just starting out on your own. You yes. just have to. You just get have to on dive in. Right? I mean, get in there. it was all the initial things like getting to know Medicare and all the yes. background yeah. business yeah. things. Google that business. We did it. Google yeah. business. Google stepped business into that. That was yeah. big, hard at the start. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and there's yeah. things that we've, we learn as soon as we have someone in or we're talking to someone that's kind of in the marketing industry, we're, you know, asking yeah. them questions and they're yeah. giving us ideas. And I think we learnt the most from you, though. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say so. 100%. Oh. So if anybody has the opportunity, yeah, the business <laughs> yeah. bus with the speeder, I would that's take so that hard. up. <laughs> yeah. you, Mel. That's very... Um, how about you, any that come to your mind in your... I learned, I learned to stay in my lane. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. let Penny do her yeah. thing. Because yeah. when it, what would take Penny five minutes yeah. would take me three hours and it would look yeah. terrible. Trust, right, especially yes. in a partnership, yes. whether it's any relationship. Because partnerships too, I think I did have that in mind, just having a good business partner. Yes. They're not all good stories either. No. no in business, but you see, how do you protect this? Like, is that a conversation you needed to have? Is that too going too personal? We've, we've, <laughs> no, yeah. it's not too personal. Yeah. We haven't had that conversation, but I have thought about it in my mind and I think that all comes down to respect. Yeah. But I admire Penny. And knowing your lane as well. Oh, and knowing, knowing your lane. Staying in your lane. Staying in your lane. Staying in your lane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because That's a I, truth bomb in this too, oh, stay in your lane. <laughs> Mel, Mel does all the writing on the socials and things like that. And when yeah. I try, it's just like one sentence. Yeah. So I started yeah. using AI chat when she wasn't here because I was lost. I'm all yeah. words, Penny's vision. Yeah. yeah. Goes together Put Mel in well. front of the camera, say, I want you to talk about this, bam. Yeah. It's done in one take. It's yeah. just how we roll, whereas put me in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm getting used to it. I'm getting we better. We are moving, getting so much better. Look, and again, as your customer going through the journey, it was seamless the way you roll because it's like, okay, we've done this part now, the scientific part. Yep. Then coming to see you, Mel. Yes. We came and it's like, you know, you're doing, doing the measurements and like, because you know you're getting something literally made, custom, custom made for you to, to your requirements. And then like, I loved the honesty. Penny oh, is just oh, like. I'm known for it. <laughs> It's, but, but you want that because I think that's why I procrastinated and I didn't yeah. walk out because there was not, you just want someone to command what's going on here and go, this is for you and that's what happened that day. We just all worked together to, to come out with a, with a solution and it felt great. So that was, don't, don't go thinking that's not, um, that's, that's a positive. I've got that. quite a reputation for that. But Pen oh, yeah. Penny's very gifted stylist. I think with that, you know, the vision and the marketing, she's a very visual person and she can put yeah. things together well. And with that, you know, it comes this amazing stylist. I wear stylist because yeah. Penny is so accurate with finding the right frame to suit your face shape, yes. your colouring. She will know when you walk around the corner and step into our door, she'll look at me and go, Mel, third from the top shelf on the right. Yeah. And I can tell you oh now, 95% of the time, 
Yeah. That is the one. Yeah. She'll yeah. nail it first. Yeah. But then we have to work with how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And are you, what are yeah. you comfortable you wearing in your that, glasses? Yeah. Are you comfortable? Did you want something bold? Did you yeah. want something to blend? Uh, yeah. I mean, you have a fabulous personality. Yeah. So we had to go a bit yeah, bold we had with to you. <laughs> and also with all your Zooming and your, yes. your podcasts and yeah. things you do live, you know, just to have a bit of wow on your face. It was yeah. so fun to help you that find was a frame. Fun. That yeah. was fun. And look, going into the vi- like, like the, 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 I'm calling it biological vision of what we need, yes. and this transition, yes. this transition, I'm going through it, and I've I've been to three conferences in the last five days, and yes. I look around, and there's a lot of glasses in the room in our industry. All yes. of them are centered around tourism. So yes. I thought this is not, this is not a conversation that is going to not benefit everybody, anybody that lands here. What what's happening to me? I can, I can probably <laughs> first I was waking up thinking I had conjunctivitis and my oh. my eyes just need to warm up no. to the day. Oh. Like because Eye things drops. are so fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. Like so I thought, oh, I'm getting sick, but then it's like no. every morning's like that. And then just the, started feeling the strain mm. and then just feeling like lettering is getting smaller. Yeah. And I need to write letters to people to just say, how do you expect anyone to read this? And everyone's like, yeah. you're in denial stage. Yeah. You need no, that's it. We see, we see <laughs> quite a lot of stage. denial. Yes. Yeah. It, it really, there's nothing deterior. Well, there is a little bit, that's a lie. Basically, we have muscles in our eye that allow the eye to focus from a distant object to a near object. So the muscles pull the lens and it becomes a thinner lens and then they release it and it becomes a thicker lens, so thicker for focusing close up and then pulls as you go to focus in the distance. You lose a little bit of that elasticity as we age, but it doesn't sort of spontaneously happen in your mid-40s that that elasticity just goes. They're super elastic when you're when you're little so you you know how newborn babies focus here mm. you know at their mother's face it's they're focusing really close and then you see the kinder kids are always down there yeah. coloring really close and primary school's about here yeah high school's about here you know you're seeing a theme yeah. here yeah 30s is here and then 40s you know that yeah. elast that super elasticity that you had as a child which enabled you to focus here and here and here, that sort of starts to become less elastic all through your life. But suddenly when you hit your 40s, your arms aren't long enough anymore because you're, you're, <laughs> you're holding things out here. And that's where you need to come into the optometrist and we just give you um, so a little bit of visual help to, to bring it back up to here. And if you don't do that, you can end up with um, just eye fatigue. Yeah. Your eyes are exhausted. They've yeah. been working too hard throughout the day to try and bring it into focus and you, you're better to come and get some glasses and make your life a little bit easier. There certainly is the number one myth that we hear all the time is I don't really want to wear glasses, they're going to make my eyes worse. That's actually not true at all. Good, some myth busting. It's a yes. myth yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's 50, 60-year-long studies now, whether you wear your glasses or not, that elasticity is going to keep deteriorating at the same rate. So you might as well... Get a great pair of glasses that are going to correct your vision. Your eyes won't feel so tired at the end of the day. You'll be able to function well. It just makes life so much easier. Yes. Um, but glasses aren't the only option. I mean, we love eyewear, but we see a lot of contact lens patients too. Yeah. Um, and there's multifocal contact lenses now and, uh, yeah, lots, lots of options. That's another surprise that so many people I've been speaking to that, you know, can't wait to get my new glasses. Yes. Um, they're like, oh, I wear contacts. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been wearing, like, so many people. They're, they're yeah. coming out that, like, yeah, I've been contact, you know, you should try them. Like, oh, I've never done that or thought of contact yes. solution. Yes. Um, but I am excited. I don't think I'm there yet. But who knows, you know, yeah. down the track, that could be the next part of the journey. Especially when if you're speaking in a big crowd of people and you need to read and you need to look at them. Yeah. All the focal contact yeah. lenses Another are level a great of option. freedom or... Yeah. 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 And a lot of technological advances in that area now. They're so much more comfortable and yes. um, easy to wear and lots, lots more options. Yes. Mm. In terms of how young... Like, should I have gone to do this sooner and would that have helped me in any way? No. Like how? No. no. I'm like, at the same stage as you. Yeah. So yeah. 
when I when we opened this practice, I had a little minimal reading script. Everything was a little bit harder, but it, it can change quite quickly and it did for me. Yeah. So mine's gotten stronger and stronger. Um, yeah. But I don't think coming any early, it was just really a case of when it's bothering you. Yeah. But you yeah. should have a regular eye test, oh, like a health years. check every two years. So you're coming to the optometrist where you have a visual need, like, oh, gee, I'm really struggling to mm. see this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you really should make a an eye health check at, at minimum every two years, and that's if you don't have a family history of something mm. because there are <clears throat> a few nasties like glaucoma. It's asymptomatic. Mm. So that's really scary. There are some people that, that come in and we do a pressure check and they have absolutely no idea that they even have glaucoma. Now, if we catch things like that early, they don't become a problem. There are treatment options, great treatment options, and we can see you through that process. But if you're not having the regular check, those things don't get picked up yeah. and then you can actually lose vision and mm -hmm. we can't get that back. Mm -hmm. So I that's think that's irreversible. It's irreversible. Like yeah. it's, and, and, and it could have all been avoided just with a regular health check. Yeah. I think it's really important when you've got young children as well before they start school. Very important. I mean, the maternal health nurses do do a little check and if they feel there's any problems. But I think before you start school, it's really important because a lot of children can't tell you that they can't see well because they yeah. don't know any different. Yeah, that, that's so normal. It may be nothing, but it's good just before they start primary school to start their yeah. seeing the optometrist, even getting used to seeing, sitting in the big chair and, yes. you know, talking yes. to the optometrist. Yeah. That's really important. Very important for kids. You don't want to start school with, you know, behind and struggling because you can't see properly or it might even be a tracking issue that doesn't always mean it's blurry. There's yes. different types of, of mm. eye problems that we, we can detect early and, and even treat some of those so that yeah. we, we won't need glasses further down Yes, the yeah, yeah. There's yeah. So, so many advances yeah. um, with children with myopia, just um, things that we can do to help yeah. stop that from getting worse. Yeah, just make it a, a regular thing. A regular thing. Yeah, yeah I definitely, and, and just speaking of children and adults to that point, about what screen time is doing to <laughs> our vision. What's, a, what are studies showing? It's absolutely horrific. It's horrific. There, yeah, there's going to be a, well, there is actually, it's already started worldwide. There is a major epidemic of myopia, which is what Penny just touched on lightly there. Is that directly related? Directly, directly related to screen use. It's really scary. So in other words, short-sighted. Myopia is short-sighted. So I am someone who is uh, short-sighted. Is that me too? No. 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 Okay. So short-sighted and if you if you are fixating, when, when we're not biologically made to fixate on a short distance for the time periods that we are and for the, for the times that children are on these devices, you need to exercise your eye. You need to be looking at different distances. You know, we were meant to be running through the jungle and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We yeah. weren't meant to have our eyes staring at one point for long periods of time. So that can actually change the whole way that your eye functions and cause you to become short-sighted. And short-sighted means that, yes, you, you can see here, but you, you're losing your distance vision. You don't see far well. So the stats are in worldwide. It is at the rate of myopia and short-sightedness is increasing an epidemic. It's a, it's a pandemic. It's terrible. So that's what Penny mentioned, that there are some things that we're, we're bringing out now, the optometry industry and the ophthalmologists, the optometrists, we're all having meetings that um, and doing statistics to try and educate the public yeah. that an hour a day and mm -hmm. they've got to go outside for two hours a day minimum yeah. outside. So even if it's a sport or walking the dog or um, just anything where you're getting out in your eye is, is tracking, it's moving around as it's meant to um, and really limiting screen time to an hour a day with, with, with young kids 100%. Obviously that's going to have that screen time will increase as they get a little bit older um, but still that two hour of outdoor time won't change. That, that's imperative to your eye health. It needs, it's such a challenge, this one. It, it really is. It really is, is I think, it, to uh, for ourselves even, just how much pressure or everything is going. Yes. But I'm certainly, when, when uh, you mentioned the fatigue, like just mm -hmm. 
where I had a lot more vitality to go for longer. It's like the body has been just shutting down. And yeah. I'm like, because I've been aware now, yes. like in seeing like seeing the, the struggle. Yes. It's like this must have all the, it, it all must ties be in. interrelated mm. of what's happening when it's like yeah. I can't it's like almost being under general anesthetic. I'm oh, done. I know. Yeah. Like, your brain's overworking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Too much happening Even out there. Even when you have your glasses displayed, which we've we've got yes, here for yes, you. I'm yes, super yes, excited. Yeah. They're going to make your screen lovely and clear and your reading will be clear, but you still need to, every 15 minutes, look up. Yeah. Look around look the room. Up. It's That's really the exercise. important, the 15 minutes, to yeah. look away from your screen, look around the room, yeah. make sure that you're, you're focusing on other things. Every yeah. 15 minutes is recommended. And I hope for everyone listening, just like it has done for myself right now, it's it's there's a scientific related research to back up the claim when we're parenting and trying to engage and educate the children in our households or not, you know, that you'd be part of this education. Yes. yes. That it's actually this could, I yeah. Think, I think we're going to be hearing into, a lot more about it in, in yeah. the coming years and unfortunately there will be a lot more children in glasses that, that probably wouldn't have been had they yeah. had yeah. they got that two hours outdoor Mm -hmm. and less screen time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Well, as we, I've even lost track. Track. I could talk to you for (laughs) ages. But before we do the reveal, before we do the reveal, because you two are well-travelled in regional Victoria where we're we're coming, well, we're not in regional Victoria, but we're definitely in um, Melbourne in the suburbs. Yes. um, And nationally with your travels for work and with your families. Um, I have an uh, I have a bit of an excellence round, and we can go uh, before I do that. Just for both of you, and I start with you, Penny. What has been great visitor experience for you? What can you think back to in terms of what you look for in a whether it's a hotel or a holiday or a destination when you travel? A lot of the time it's my husband that comes up with, I really? want to come here, I want to go. I'm just like, yeah, take me. Oh, <laughs> I'll go anywhere. Happy days is a so if I think back, we have travelled quite um, overseas quite well with our children. Like we've done really well with them. They've travelled a bit. Um, probably a standout holiday for us um, was we went to Mexico and then we went on a Disney cruise. Oh, um, and this was about, I don't know, seven years ago. Yeah. And we did that all through an independent travel agent that my husband knew really well. And I don't think we could have done a trip like that without the agent. Yes. For sure. Like there's no way we could have organised. And even just booking the Disney trip back then, you couldn't do that easily online. You had to go through an agent and, you know, that made a world of difference. Um, That was probably my favourite trip that I've done. But my worst would be the COVID trip when we went to England on March the 11th, 2020, and we had a five-week European holiday planned and I've never been to Europe or my children. (laughs) And then um, we only stayed in England, which was amazing, beautiful, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. But we only stayed six days. We got the email to say come back and yeah. rush yeah. back. and yeah, so Oh, I can't imagine that feeling having. It was, yeah. It was, just that, yeah. <laughs> and it and was then like, by the time we come on the other side, yeah, it, yeah. It just, it's another challenge to get everyone together to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So it was good timing for us, for our children's yes. age. Yes. Um, it was my husband's 40th. You yeah. know, we were going to be in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. You, you plan it for a year. Yeah. Down to a T. Yeah. And we just ended up coming home. Yeah. Even though we loved England and York yes. and yeah. all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, there was so much uncertainty. You yeah, just want to be home to. in a time like that. It's interesting. Just recently I heard even from a business perspective there's been like a, this uh, almost like post-COVID complacency now, like we all got really innovative in business and did things differently, yes, like yes. through the disruption. But now there's been a showing that, you know, post-COVID, um, that's something that's also, in you know, coming through. But that is just <clears throat> yes, weird. Yes, it was that. But yeah, yeah. But health, health. Yeah, we all comes first. We all and when you're travelling with your children, you're yeah. not as risky. You're not going to yeah, take yeah. the risk that oh, you might. That is so true. Yeah. So true. What about you, Mel? 
I look for ease of travel. Ease, <laughs> yeah. I want it to be easy and comfortable. Yeah. So I, I look for <clears throat> somewhere where you can relax and ease of travel just means that um, don't have to think too hard, everything's there. And because we do work quite hard and we work yeah. long hours, so yeah. when, when I plan a little trip, I went up at Bendigo recently, yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm going somewhere that has everything, ticks all my boxes, that you're welcomed, it's nice and easy, um, good food would be yeah. another one. Mm, food's very so <laughs> ease of travel would be my number one. Um, and my no, number two would be I really enjoy going out for dinner and um, when I'm away I think... You know, when you're at home and you have a family, it's, oh, what am I cooking yes. for dinner oh, tonight? Yes. Cooking. When I go yeah. away, it's such an opportunity to enjoy good food yeah. mm. without all the work. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big part of my little trips, even if it's just an overnight or an Airbnb mm. or anything like that. I'm I'm always looking for somewhere nice that I can go out for dinner yeah. um, and enjoy something a little bit different yeah. that I wouldn't normally have at home. Beautiful. And yeah. we are spoiled for that in Australia. We have oh, local totally. produce and good food. Yeah. yeah. And maybe a, a, a nice experience. Yes. Um, I know for Christmas I gave my eldest son and his girlfriend a, a voucher to go to Alba down on the Mornington oh, Peninsula. Oh, nice, yes. Haven't been myself yet. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and they just came back raving about what an amazing experience it was. Yeah. So um, that's somewhere I'm going to try and head with my my husband and maybe we might yeah. make that a little bit oh, of a, beautiful. an overnighter. But that's definitely something I, in, in my tourism experience, just encouraging a lot of tourism operators to offer gift certificates because yes. we are in the world that we just we want opportunities to yes. do things with our families or with each other and giving experiences over stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah, which like you've done. I much prefer that they're, they're older now so the toys are, uh, and you know, yeah, yeah. not getting the toys under the Christmas yeah. tree. I'd much rather give them a wonderful experience. So I'm looking for things like that. Yeah. And obviously being a small business, you want to support other businesses. So yes. I'm looking for other businesses that are offering for things that I can maybe give give as, yeah. as a gift. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I saw also, I love another thing. Again, this is why we just, you know, there's a, it ignited this conversation. And if you you walk the talk, even with your collaboration, something that I talk a lot about and had a lot of success with, but you're doing it within your local community. The mascara here that I see with yes, the local... Yes, a local ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist, yes, yes. I can't get that roll <laughs> off the tongue. It's yes, a local ophthalmologist. Like those yes. collaborations that you're talking about and supporting local, but yes. also collaborating with each other. Women Absolutely supporting love. women. We're women, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of inspirational women. Amazing. The yes. last... Yeah. You know, two and a half years. Yes. So many. Incredible. Yeah. You being one of them. Yeah. Oh, you know, ditto. Ditto. so ditto. many. Ditto, ditto, ditto. <laughs> so if we if we start to kind of close this out, I'll start with you, Mel. The best advice that you've received on this journey. The best advice that I've received on this journey. You will get out of it what you put into Ooh, it. Ooh, you'll get out what you put in. Yeah. How about you, Penny? Mine will always have to come back to marketing because that's yeah. probably my biggest yeah. um, part of our yeah. journey. And it's yeah. probably when you said to us, make a plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It helps. Be more structured. Yeah, yeah. Monthly, do, you know. Yes. And that's what we've done and, yeah, yeah that's been important to me. Love. To get Great. my head around things. Oh, and you're so always good. learning. Always, always learning. Always, always learning. Always learning. Um, some habits, morning habits, daily habits. Do you have something that really helps accelerate you and get the best out of your day? Ooh. Coffee. <laughs> oh, coffee. <laughs> caffeination. And yeah. your best local barista. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that, the, my, yeah, a good coffee. I just yeah. love starting the day with a good coffee. Yeah. And we have such a great re – that's another bit of our – Building a community, community. yeah. To say it, but yes, yes. yes. Our, using our, our local chatting with our local barista businesses while we go yeah. get our morning coffee, yes, has resulted in all sorts of patients coming to us. That, yeah, yeah that oh, listen to yes. us, engaging with her in the morning. But I, I mean, I am a bit of a coffee addict, and I love to start the day with yeah. a good one. So yeah. it, it's a little bit of a ritual for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have a coffee and a bit of a chat if we get time in the morning. That's yeah. right. With our um, optometrist Bavini, we always have a laugh. Yes, and yeah. 
Yes. That's good. It's a natural habit that's evolved, but yeah. it's an important that's part important. of the day. Yeah, you yeah. have the coffee. We do that yeah. early because once we've had that coffee at 9 o'clock in the morning, because that's when we do it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we finish, we, we chat, Yeah. we discuss things from the previous day, and then we're ready to go. Yeah. 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 Love, love, love. Now, we've talked about some internet resources. Any books, go-to books that have changed you or had an impact on you? Well, Outlander, that man's sexy, but it's not business. <laughs> <laughs> business related, Mel. Um, <laughs> business related. I'm not sure, really. Mel knows I'm not a reader. Yeah. So you can't put, put a book in front of me. Yeah, visual. I would just. Visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But content, anyone you content. follow? Content. Anybody that. Do you know Gee. what? We, we really didn't. That is probably something we didn't do. And I don't know whether we would have done better if we had. Maybe yeah. we would have. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I would have to say we've probably been a bit laps in in looking for things to motivate us because we were so we've got so oh, many so ideas happening already, and we've got each other to. But we talk also wanted to, through. and were committed to doing things differently. Yeah, we didn't really want to look or outside copy off anyone yeah. else or for inspiration on how to um, put our business out there. We thought, do you know what? Let's be dive modern. in deep and let's do things a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. We are an independent small boutique optometry practice. Yeah, we're very reliant on word of mouth, but we wanted to be unique. Yeah, and I think to be unique, we kind of almost had to not look too much yeah. at what others were doing and start to think, how can we do this differently? Yes. How can we do this in a way that is going to engage with people that hasn't been done before? Because, like I said, it's a fairly conservative industry yeah. Yeah. Um, and we really wanted to put ourselves out there. Um, I think probably we could maybe have done a little bit more of reading of motivational mm -hmm. books or maybe small business, um, probably might go and do that now. <laughs> oh, I think, look, you're an active participant in your community. I think there's, yeah, from the other side of the coin, you could do all the reading that you, you, you want, but unless mm -hmm. you kind of just get in there giving things a go that you have, mm -hmm. it's rope learning, isn't it? Like yes, you're just, that's what it has you been. Are really, yeah. And, yeah, just the energy. Is yes. palpable between the two of you. You can mm. see, like, I think it almost, yeah. I see partnerships like this, and it, it there's a little, there's envy that you you did you've gone through the walk path alone. You know where yeah. you've got it's there's a lot of benefits to finding someone to go through this because it can be lonely too. And for those that may be feeling like that. Yes. Like it doesn't find still finding someone within your community to have those coffees, have those chats, 100%. making the effort yes. to mm. go out and connect yes. can make a big difference. Oh, I huge. Make all found the difference. That, yeah. I, I really think that you nailed it there. We're very aware that we're lucky to have a successful partnership because we don't have that small business loneliness. Yeah. We don't feel alone and we can always bounce things off each yes. other. And you know, um, like even in a marriage at home or like my work marriage with Penny, yes, <laughs> um, yes. there'll be days where one might not be feeling so fantastic but the other one usually isn't. Yes. So you sort of have that one of you always to pick up the other. Yeah. I think if you were alone that would be difficult but that's where definitely integrating yourself into your community and and, and asking and seeking advice from others, yeah. even if it's the barista. Yeah. You know, she knows everybody locally. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I didn't have Penny and it was a bit quiet, yeah. I'd be saying to her, hey, look, I'm a bit quiet. What are you finding? Yeah. Is yeah. there anything you can get? What would make you come in and see us for an eye test or just bounce stuff off? Of local yeah. business owners or or join the the group like we did. The yeah, well we had a business, business mentor group. as well. Yes. When we first opened, Brilliant. we had a business yeah. mentor through yeah. the Grants Victoria. Yeah, great. Yeah. So we could just yeah. taking any opportunity we can. Just yeah. Yeah. Oh, make use of any opportunity. But don't expect it to come to you. Go and look for it. Mm. Go. Yes. Go and look for yes. it because we would have loved a financial yeah. grant. We kept, I was every day. <laughs> <laughs> is there any financial grant for small <laughs> independent optometry <laughs> business? No, there was no financial assistance. But that 
Penny just mentioned, there was a mentor. You could yeah. get business mentoring and we only just opened. So uh, we, we sent off and applied for that through the local government. Yeah. And, and that was valuable because he made us think about things that um, with marketing and social media and, and putting yourselves out there. So that sort of ignited and began yes. that process. So make use of anything that's available to you. Go to it. The White Horse Business Association we mentioned earlier. Yeah. That If you go to their catch-up Friday night drinks, you're going to be talking to fellow business owners. It might not be what you do, yeah. but there's so much you can learn from other industries and other businesses because you might think, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. I might give that a go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never regret it. Going no. to, like, yeah, going to, it's like it's like the gym. Yes. It's so like, oh, do I don't want to. Yes. I love myself. But then you always walk away meeting someone yes. or learning and something And glad new. that you went. And glad that you went, always. Yeah. All right, eyeweararchitects.com.au. Yes, at I Wear Architects on the socials, on the gram and on yes, the TikTok. TikTok. Yes. And I'm going to smash out everywhere, like to put oh. links and everything to connect because I tell you the work, it's been my journey prior was literally across the road from me. Yes. It was a five-minute walk, not even a drive, and wow. it's just been a blessing and worth the drive. So wherever, if you're in Victoria... Um, I don't know, how would someone engage with you if they're not here, driving distance? They'd have to fly well, to we, come and... We do you do virtual? <laughs> virtual, we, yeah. We just sent up some glasses last week to Cairns, so we There have you go, wherever yes. you are, reach yes. out. Um, pick up the, the phone. The, the, we pick up the phone. Yes. There's, uh, that's the beauty of having a business in 2024, yeah. isn't it? There's yes. no barrier. Yes. No. Yep, no okay. barrier. So... I thought, well, we'll save it till last. We'll end with the reveal. Oh, well, these poor babies. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be a whole new world. Let's go through and look. Oh, wow. You have a wow personality. Yeah. So you have oh. wow eyewear to go with your personality. A beautiful Italian-made glare frame. It's actually a one-off frame. You won't see this anywhere else. Emerald green, stunning, bold Emerald and fabulous green. like you. And I, you know my, my term, I always say stay green and growing. There we oh, go. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. It's meant to be. Now, have a oh. look at your screen, Despina. Oh, look. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, really? And even looking up and across and... You should be oh, my God, you're really even... Well. <laughs> Like honestly, even just looking, I it's know. like I know it's like those plasmas that you you know, like yes. you've gone from a ninety-five plasma TV yes. to like <laughs> we say a that HD, HD, yeah, yeah. you've gone to HD, HD. yeah, oh, ultra HD, HD. Yes. or whatever it is. These and you, oh, this is next level. Oh, even it's I know. it's like I've upgraded everything. I know the laptop, the, and you've got a beautiful oh. blue light anti-reflective coating, so it's going to block out all the screen blue light for you. Hundred oh. percent UVA, UVB. We went for a Zeiss lens for you, but it's actually one of their occupational lenses, so. You can see me nice and clearly because I'm about the distance that you'll get to in the top of that lens. Really good for screen-based work. Yeah. And then when you look down, you'll be able to read whatever you need. Oh, yep. only yesterday. That's <laughs> why. Now it's going to be like a challenge. How small is it? Give it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel oh, like I need to. Oh, yeah. Can we just say yeah, how beautiful yeah, they look? Yeah, we've got the green. They yeah. look amazing. Oh, Look, I they make wait. you smile. They'll bring oh, you joy. Oh, look, I just got a glimpse yeah, of yeah. myself. Oh, uh, and they, yeah, I love, love. Yes. I, I'm loving the feeling anyway. The look is going to be the bonus. Like the fact that yes. I yes. already feel, it's that fatigue too. Yes. yes. It's already lifted. Yes. Right? Yep. Yes. It's immediate, the feeling. It's immediate. Yep. That they were just feeling puffy and tired. Mm. and That's because you got the yes. right lens. You got the right lens. Yeah. I can see clearly <laughs> yeah. now. Oh, no. Uh, oh, man. We've got a list of out the back of eyewear songs. Yes. Eyewear songs. Did you do I put vision of love. I, had a, I did a real thing when I first came to do the whole process and, yeah, my real vision of love came to me. Good. It is a vision of love. Yes. All round. Yes. Like yes. literally, but also just what you're doing. Stay on path. Keep inspiring. You're going to you. inspire many. And I couldn't recommend this journey and bring on the checkups to check in with you. Yes. Um, but we'll always be connected 
on you know yeah, on, on no, the ground as well, yep, well following and igniting your journey so thank you thank you to everyone that is watching uh, this is brought to you by institute of excellence the home of institute of tourism and institute of small business and what a great great <laughs> small business story we've just heard is there anything that we haven't covered that you feel we need to before we close out Oh, Any parting good. words? Because I'd hate to walk out of here and say like I should have mentioned or should have asked. Do you know what? Don't 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 regret not doing it. Don't yeah. regret not doing it. Yes, because there's well, regret is awful. Yeah. You know, if you have a passion for something and it's niggling away at you, give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah. Love that. What a way. What a way to to end. That give give it a go. Whatever's bubbling inside you, whatever it is. Give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? Be You're brave. You're going to flan. Need to be brave. Flan. 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 Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Big love, everybody, and big love to both of you. Thank oh, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Relax.